Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. In this three part episode we look at repairing my Tonks board that I bought a while ago and then we'll be fitting it into this York JCB861 and then we'll be doing some alignment to get it working. So the main problem with this Tonks board is that it was looks like it was just ripped out of a radio and the um, the IC plug is non-existent so we're going to replace the whole thing so first off a nice piece of new ribbon cable with the 16 connectors and then we need to crimp this onto the new plugs that I bought little bit fiddly to get it aligned but it does go eventually you can see it just wasn't in the correct place there So what I found is quite an effective way of crimping these is using a small desktop vise. Now I've had to put something in between the pins to stop obviously stop them being crushed, which was just an old IDC plug. And then using the desktop vise. Slowly close it together and that seems to crimp it quite nicely. There we have it, a new cable. So we need to prepare the Tonks board to receive this new cable. So first off, just going to apply some new solder to the old plug. And then using some desolder braid, I'm going to unsolder this. little bit fiddly but I don't want to damage any of the tracks that are on the board so I'll keep it nice and slow and steady so just a couple more of the pins that need attention I think that should just about do it. And there we have it. The 
there's the old plug. I'm just going to tidy up the pads. A little bit of isopropyl alcohol on a cotton bud, remove the old flux. And there we are, nice job. Nice and clean, no pads ripped. So let's have a look at the Tonks board before we put it in the radio. So there is the UK40 PLL chip, 10240 crystal. Moving up, the 4078 and the 4011 logic gates and what I can presume this one is, is some form of bipolar prom. This one seems to do all the magic in the conversion. And under there, I wonder what that can be. It's got a Sanyo and a batch number on it. So that, must, that will be the LC7132. There is no doubt about it. Moving back down to the 7137 area. These components are the frequency compensating components with the transistor that controls it. And the other transistors do something with the VCO lock. Now one thing I hadn't noticed is that the new plugs I bought are slightly bigger. So this board has been designed to fit that old style plug and we're going to have to fit the new style plug. So first off the crystal has to come out and before we fit the plug we'll just trim the ends down for the scalpel. Now the idea was with these radio, uh, this board is that you took the PLL chip out of your radio and slotted it into this board. Well luckily when I bought this board it already had a PLL chip on it so I'm hoping this PLL chip works. So I'm still trying to fit the plug into place and this capacitor is now in the way. I can't bend it over because it's far too close to the plug. So what we'll do is we'll remove it and we'll put it on the underside of the board. This won't make any difference to the operation of the board anyway. It's all going to be in its protective sleeve anyway so And there we have it, one hot capacitor. And now the new plug sits in beautifully. So let's solder this in. Just making sure the plug's flush to the board, and it is. There we have it, new plug soldered in. And we'll solder this capacitor to the back of the board. Try not to get it too hot. There, that just sits nicely. Now the problem I had is that this crystal was being very awkward in its positioning. But luckily they'd left nice long legs on it for us. So with a bit of fiddling and a little bit of leg bending, we managed to get it in and get it to lie down next to the plug. And again, we'll solder this in. And 
And there it is. So now this is ready to go into the radio. So in part two, we'll be fitting this into the radio. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.